and welcome back to another Linux Teamcast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news and reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Steam, uh, Android, it, that thing, it's out, the Steam link, not that link, it's a different link, uh, it's here, we're going to share our experiences with it, and Feral's lead Linux human has left the building, and yes, Elvis is reportedly devastated. Valve's looking for some wage monkeys. Want to go work for a company that'll let you collect a paycheck while doing nothing? And Zero ID smokes the good kush. You're going to like it, Bubba. Gaben giveth and Gaben taketh away. The overlay freeze is fixed, but the, them anime <laughs> titties are gone. And a lone developer Not armed the with a titty. <laughs> Proves Poor birds. that there's no reason for a duck game not to be on Linux or to not be on Linux, something like that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for the 300th time, no, nay, not Sparta. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual, running the boards here at Athens, doing this nightmare fuel with our Canadian bureau chief in Toronto. One Jordan's saying, who had to crack the window open because I think it like got up to 20 degrees in his room and he's like, oh, it, 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 it did. I was, I was just going to say, like, we probably like follow the Spartan fraternal love thing with the, you know what? Never mind. We'll get into that later. This is true. And that voice you hear is the man from Space Britannia himself, uh, by the way of Portugal, one Pedro Mateus. And joining us, you know him, you love him. The worst of the worst, the trolliest of trolls, but we like to call him Shadrum Dynamic because they help us form the last little bit. Known as Cocaine Voltron. I'm just going to go real quick. I poisoned myself before the show. I survived. Deal with it, fate. Fuck you. Uh, what's up, Jordan? Uh, I poisoned myself before the show and didn't survive. Ooh. <laughs> it's the twist. Ooh. All right, M. Knight. What are you up to? <laughs> Pedro. Well, uh, over here, I've just been futzing around. I got a uh, ThinkPad X240 that I'm just basically trying to figure out exactly what I need to make it good. Uh... Windows I'm 10. Trying to figure it out. No. <laughs> it's going to be Re- running react- Ubuntu Mate React OS. React OS. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you're not installing React OS, you're a fucking heathen and you deserve to get cancer. Running Windows 10 in a VM. <laughs> Hard mode. Do it. <laughs> okay, that, that could be something to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, one thing that is always hard mode for us. Uh, well, we're kind of hard mode for the horse. What's it up to this week? Yeah, speak, speaking about Sparta, man. Again, we're, we'll, we'll get to that later. It's the Steam. <laughs> Wait, damn it. Take two. Go. It's the Steam. Linux. Update. Of the week. Of the butt sex, I mean week. Jesus, really? <laughs> All right. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Quit being a tit. Welcome to episode... Welcome to episode 300, ladies and gentlemen. It's not getting any better. Stephen Bush um, is getting a bit of a uh, overhaul. So you might know if you've uh, dabbled in the VR space that there are a lot of different ways you can interact with the VR application, and new stuff is coming out daily. Especially now that they're uh, all the shipping ASICs for things you can just place on objects. It'll be tracked by the uh, light stations or whatever the hell they're called, lighthouses. So. Uh, Valve has decided to create a little utility for the lovely th- people to um, configure uh, the Steam controller, make a essentially do what Steam input did for you know PlayStation controllers and Steam controllers and combs, <laughs> um, <laughs> where where you you you, you plug you, you plug them in and uh, you you can configure them through uh, through Steam's interface and Steam input will handle all the various input disparities. They're doing that with uh, VR now. So um, the, the other added benefit is if you're a company that makes a VR application, you just have to create a new profile for the controller that you want to support and Steam Input will do the rest. Now, Flipit has talked a lot about how uh, Steam Input is kind of an unholy chimera of just terribleness, but I think sort of leveling the playing field in the VR space, especially creating something like consistent that people can use to create a consistent experience is really valuable and is quite forward thinking. We're going to talk about uh, forward thinking a little later. The one downside to this though, is that you're making steam a hard dependency on your shit. Now Valve's been pretty good about releasing open source versions of tools that they expect developers to use. But since this sort of ties into their VR ecosystem space, they may not this time. This is true, man. Looking at this. So the cut of it is with VR. Now you can, plug in anything well the, that's the ultimate goal right yep okay yeah, yeah so you can it, pretend it, that you support your yeah. yeah you can kind of pretend that you have an oculus rift and 
Like, look. Yeah. But uh, or, or, to Jordan's have, point, like, uh, yeah, Valve has been pretty good with the opening of libraries and whatnot that they develop in order to mostly help people get their games on Steam and have it work for everyone. Uh, they are releasing the um, the details for OpenVR, the SDK version 1.0.15, and uh, the first I think the first version is already out on their GitHub, and so that is something. And they also have the driver API documentation for the controller bits, so that's a start. Hmm. I really do hope they make the whole thing open source so everyone can have it regardless of whether or not the game is on Steam, but I can see that as a business case, Valve is very much interested on them being on Steam. All right, let's go from that and let's talk about these Steam overlays, man, because apparently you've been having issues with them. Yes. Well, myself and at least 70 other people... I I don't. Quite the opposite. I love them. Why why do you I love them. Uh, in any case, uh, about myself and at least 70 other people on the uh, Steam for Linux GitHub have been reported for years and years. Well, it's been about a year, but uh, it's that the overlay, whenever you start the overlay, regardless of whether you're using Mesa, wherever you, whether you're using the um, uh, NVIDIA proprietary drivers, whatever it is, opening a game and... Uh, Going around the um, the overlay, be it open a browser or opening the Steam community or opening the friends thing so you can invite people, sometimes the game would freeze. And the only way to get it back was to either kill the overlay process or to stop and restart the game process, at which point the overlay process just crashed. So, so you're saying they fixed that? They fixed it. They finally freaking fixed it. Jordan? Was this ever a problem for you? I know, I know we, both of us hang out in XFC four lane. I've never experienced this type of dog shit. No, I, I mean, like I've I've not run into the vast majority of overlay bugs, mm-hmm. and when I do, I just turn it off, and then like, like a week or so later, I read in the show notes, so like, hey, they fixed that bug, sweet. So I re-enable it yeah. just because I like the, I like having overlay on. It's cheat mode if you need to alt tab out of a out of an application that's going to lock your cursor. Hmm. All right. Well. Yeah. That's going to be unfrozen, and maybe we can use this new advanced technology to play some top secret games, right? Uh, I mean, man, look, look, look at look at that uh, beautiful freaking face. The thing on uh, on Valve. What it doesn't or, uh, show Valve. is he's on a mountain bike. <laughs> what it doesn't show is there's also something hooked up to his dick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Steam has a brand new, or not Steam. Valve has a brand new website. It's it's kind of hard to for, to remember sometimes that like. Valve and Steam are actually completely different entities, or uh, and and so they have their distinct website, and it's a nice modern thing. It has some videos playing in the background. Um, apparently, uh, their their big thing now is oh, Valve is making hardware. This is something they're advertising as a priority, um, along with a bunch of job offerings, which I may have may or may not have perused through to see if I qualified for any of them. <laughs> I gotta say the uh, the uh, the op end position piqued my curiosity. But I feel that I feel that maybe that's one of the few teams in Valve that's actually expected to do stuff. So, <laughs> I don't, I, well, you the, the, the interesting thing running. Too, or the the server backend running, man. Uh, the 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 big thing the big thing here is um, that Valve doubling down on her is an interesting proposition. Although, like given given that Steam prints money for them, I'm eighty percent sure they're. They've essentially just Nintendo this, where like Nintendo has enough money where even if they're operating at a loss every year, they can still run for like another hundred years. But there's another way to look at that because I was thinking maybe they Microsoft did, where Microsoft just bought their way into the fucking industry, right? Mm -hmm. But it it, it does look like Valve is actually like trying to like hire engineers and produce stuff. Hmm. Yeah. It all right. Isn't this like this weird moon moon future we were sitting around? Because five years ago, six years ago, there was still hope that Valve was going to make games. And like the concept that like wait they're hiring game developers they bought a game studio this is this is strange this is not the Valve we know they should make hats yeah they bought an entire game studio it's uh yeah I guess that card game isn't gonna make itself 
Well, I mean, they, they got a new uh, high, uh, writer and they got the uh, guys and gals from Firewatch, so it's natural that Half-Life 3 is going to be a narrative-driven uh, exploration game where you don't do anything with a walkie-talkie. It, it's just a combine soldier on the other end. It's, it's like, a walking uh, simulator. <laughs> No, no, see what 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 you're what you're failing to see is the VR re-release of Ricochet is coming and it's going to be amazing. Oh, oh okay. Mm. Okay, that's sure. the thing. Uh this this kind of got me excited. When did this uh was it Thursday or Friday this dropped uh mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Steam link and not that link, the other link. Man, they're taking a book out of Nvidia uh on this one. A page out of that book. Extend your Steam gaming experience to your phone, tablet or TV over your local network, which I was like, what about the LTE thing? That kind of made things interesting. What you can do is you can download this right now. It's in beta from the Play Store. Put it on your Android device, hook it up, and I did it. It works. It gives you a little prompt code on your desktop. You type that in, hooks it up, and it attempts to run, at least on my end. Then it goes, what type of dog shit resolution is this tablet again? Uh Uh-uh. Fuck off, buddy. And (laughs) it crashed the desktop. But, uh... Everyone else has said it has worked. I know Strider even tried it with his second gen Nexus 10, not Nexus 10, Nexus 7, which I have one of those laying around somewhere. Uh, and it worked, but it was slow. And they're, yeah. they're, they're saying on here too that um, if you have a really good uh, PC and a really good client device, it's possible to stream at 4K at 60 FPS, to which I say, mm. oh, that's a lovely little pipe dream you got there, uh, Gabe. Um, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I buy some? Even, can I buy some drugs from you? Even streaming at 1080p to the Shield, it was slow. It's very slow. I don't know what the hell's going on there, but it is slow. Well, it is in beat. All right, it does the little check. It checks your network, right? And mm-hmm. network's fine here. I normally get like 100 megabits uh, over the Wi-Fi's, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. And it was still slow when you're in. I've seen a lot of people playing with the shield, but they said, I think Empty said, as long as you're playing something like um, uh, Binding of Isaac or some shit like that, but as soon as you try to rock into like 3D anything, first person anything. Yeah, I just, tried uh, I tried the game that we're throwing chairs at this week, and that, well, the game, well, we'll get into that later, but uh, yeah, it was slow. It was uh, oh. much slower on the uh, on the uh, tablet than it was on the screen that I could actually see it because hmm. it was right. I, uh, <laughs> see, I, I would I would have thought you had you'd have problems with it, Ven, just because I've like gone and lined all the walls in your house with aluminum. I got to try this out on uh, on my tablet because I have not set this up yet. <laughs> also, want to see how uh, Tomb Raider runs over over the Wi-Fi. Let's we'll see if that. Uh, well, it that connected well. Thank you, Michael, because he picked us up that. Uh... You routed just for uh, down here. Yeah, it's on its own thing. Yeah. And uh, I was like right in front of it. So in, until you have cracked invisible aluminium that I can't see, that's going to... <laughs> I gotta, Listen, man, I'm waiting for it. I'm, I, I'm I, working on it. I'm I, working on I it. I expect it, motherfucker, but not yet. You have not brought it. Um, caching, Steam, it's a thing. Yes. Uh, the critters over at PC Perspective. Ken wrote a thing. Good on you, Ken. Mm-hmm. Call him Mini Ging. Uh... <laughs> This is a thing. This is a good idea. Oh, Do you mean Minge? Minge? Wait, what? Oh, wait. <laughs> um, quiet. Uh, I was reading this, and you can set up a Steam cache server. They walk you through it. It uses the Linux, and it's all that. It's like, ah, all right, that's silly. That's silly. Until I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. Land parties. Meet space land parties mm-hmm. where you have 10, 20. I'm thinking regular size, not like some quick con type shit. But yeah. If you have a local storage for all that and 10 people, 20 people need to install the game, this is a good way to go about it, right? Yep. The, 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 other, thing I, the other thing I thought of was um, internet cafes. If you need to like image a bunch of uh, machines and install a bunch of various games, having mm-hmm. it go over the local network is probably a little faster. Also, um, maybe you live in a place with really poor internet connection, like, say, Space mm-hmm. Tanzania. Might, uh, might, might be useful for something like that. Well, uh, hmm, that, that could, could definitely be, uh, be a thing. I mean, you could drag your desktop into your local Starbucks. And be like, what are you doing? Shut up! Leave me alone. Oh, you drag your NAS in there too. So, yeah, uh, they set they set it up on uh, free NAS, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or no, no, it was, and, uh, it was uh, a QNAP. Ha- not, not. I don't think it was running uh, free NAS. A NAS is a NAS. Oh, unless shit. a NAS. It was a NAS, dude. Yes. 
They're 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 they were straight up virtualizing a bunch of sixteen oh four on a NAS to mm-hmm. run this caching server. That's a yeah, little, that's and a little they were running up. it off of a uh, Ryzen seven mm-hmm. uh, seventeen hundred. And mm-hmm. according to what Ken wrote, uh, the uh, like the caching process and Steam running on the uh, on the server was using one thread of the Ryzen. And that one thread was the bottleneck, and it bottlenecked at 250 megabytes per second. Okay, first of all, Valve, you need to fix that. Second, one thread, 250 megabytes per second? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's yep. pretty good. No. no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing we just thought, uh, we thought everyone I, I, I still can't get over a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU <laughs> in a NAS. That seems like a stupid amount of overkill. You would think, man, I've seen some like 24 plus bays. They're standard with Ryzen's because they're cheap enough and you have 16 mm-hmm. available threads, you know? I guess. I, guess. Oh, I, I so agree weird. with you. Yeah, it's cray cray, man. Uh, it's hot like our next story. Too hot. Too hot for Steam, apparently, because uh, Honey Pop and other adult games facing removal from the Steam store. So, uh, yeah, this uh, came out. Yesterday. Jesus, man, this Something reads like, like Atomic's wish list. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, it does. They've actually added the list well, of games and developers that have basically been contacted by Valve. I'm to sorry, say, I didn't know Tropical Liquor was a game. I just, I'm curious now. <laughs> and and to, uh, and to, to be say, fair, it's not if, Atomic's wish list. It's it's games on his already like <laughs> it's games in his Steam inventory, Steam library. Yeah. Um, yeah, he probably already has all of them. Uh, but yeah, all of these uh, developers have gotten the uh, semi... Um, well, it's basically Valve going to them and saying, you need to cover up the titties and release your game to make sure that uh, no titties are ever visible. Otherwise, we'll remove your game from the store. And uh, if you saw uh, Jim Sterling's video on this particular subject today, it's, uh, yeah, it's great. Now that they, you know, have gotten rid of all the asset flips. You see, this, this picture this picture offends me for one thing and one thing only. It's poorly drawn. Yes, there are a lot of those, to be fair. <laughs> but, but, listen, if it's vaguely woman-shaped and has boobs, most people have no problem jacking off to it. Here's, here's the thing. Oswald Heist once said that the opposite of war is fucking. And apparently on, Val, on Steam, you can have as much war as you want, but the opposite doesn't hold true. And like Ben said... I, and like what Pedro was alluding to, I really feel like this is kind of it's dumb, right? This is this mm-hmm. is you can you can have ultra violent schlock on Steam, you can have zero effort garbage on Steam, but if someone like makes an erotic game and they put a lot of time and effort into it and they sell it, and there's very clearly an audience for it because these games fucking sell. They do. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> Wait, are, are you, are you, are you it, it, seriously it, it, trying to convince me that if you wanted to disembowel a nun with a frying pan while sodomizing a kitten with a shotgun, that's perfectly passable on Steam? However, if I show a little bit of skin while doing that, nope, it's got to go. No, no, that nun's got to be fully clothed. And, and, and yes, you, you got to break that habit, man. Or rather, don't break the <laughs> habit. Well, um, but this, 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 is, this is what I'm getting at, though. Like... This, this is like really dumb, stupid uh, um, censorship issues to, to pacify this small contingent of pearl clutching idiots who are like, oh, the children are going to get ruined by seeing fucking anime boobs. No one cares. Yeah, and, the, and the thing about this one was that it was actually pressure. Oh, I like what you did there. Uh, it was actually pressure from a certain group to PayPal. And then PayPal went, okay, we have a lot of people making money off of Steam, so we're going to get in touch with Valve. And Valve, seeing the pressure, oh crap, that's actually PayPal. I guess we got to do something now, because that's the only way that Valve ever does something, is when there's someone with a significant amount of power, or, you know, a significant amount of pull, to tell them, no, you can't do that, and they'll actually, you know, start doing something about it. Mm Mm-hmm. God well, it, the the one the one thing that did come out of it is um, Faku, one of the one of the big old porn websites on the internet, has decided uh, a couple of months ago that they were opening a game uh, game publishing label or a game publisher, and um, they're basically saying, "Hey, everyone who's getting kicked off of Steam, uh, we'll, we'll we'll take you in, and mm-hmm. we're going to make a ton of money yep. off it." We're just call so. it Steamy dot horse, man. Uh, <laughs> we got a couple of game updates this week, starting with Apocryph. 
one mm-hmm. not zero basically they went back and like at fixed some bugs they're still working on releasing the entire game but a little more on that at 11 uh pedro buddy the uh you you noticed uh one, one of the features of the latest update is it was entirely in russian comrade um oh yes yeah there was cyrillic all over the place there was no escaping that it's it just <laughs> it's like fuck you i uh, it was like is this hard mode i mean it didn't take long to figure it out just using you know game now it's like okay this should be yeah. here getting and then i did that uh it's it's still uh, we're gonna be playing this later on in the show didn't do anything with the performance they said they've in Proved the AI to which I'll just say this for right now. I'm glad we didn't play it before the update. Uh, on that at 11. Also, they fixed some of the save game issues and uh, I'm just not all of them. So that's a little bit of an update for that. Uh, we do have some Half Life news though. Yeah, it looks like well, Mr. Freemans might be coming of. back for a revival. <laughs> um, so uh obsidian what the fuck was this called um obsidian conflict uh long before synergy was a thing uh there was obsidian conflict if you wanted to uh play half-life 2 in multiplayer uh if, and I'm, I'm sure it's equally as fucky when you're playing through the main campaign but that's why the obsidian conflict uh mod came with a bunch of like custom maps and levels and um, narrative modules even even something involving like fishing and farming they basically just took the half-life 2 engine and said hey let's just go fucking buck wild with this and make random ass games and levels in it which is uh, it's a good thing uh, i kind of it kind of lost a bit of steam it's back now you can they're uh, they're working on getting it to a playable state and i don't know i, I want to I see like stardew valley through the lens of meet the freemans that's all that's all i'm saying <laughs> uh it's uh yeah it's it was uh what synergy became but back then, and uh, it's also got a bunch of uh, custom game modes, as well as the custom maps and the custom NPCs. And uh, then you brought up a, a couple of good points. Farming, fishing. Farming and fishing. Too. Yes, <laughs> and listen, you, you don't have to do fucking all except for that. We can sit around a pond and fish. We can stream this shit, and what we'll do is just like a play-by-play uh, reenactment. Stream fishing reenactment of mice and men it'll be great fuck your alfalfa dying of fire uh bro force 2018.4 update notable changes coming about oh yes yeah that's a there's a lot of changes actually uh they fixed several bugs uh if you don't know what it is it's bro force it's a, a game where you play as action heroes and you go through levels it's a platformer 2d Pips or pixel, the usual, and you unlock more bros and, uh, well, sisses, if you are, uh, you know, if you want to use the correct term or whatever. Uh, <laughs> what they did was uh, they improved performance. They improved the overall frame rate of the game, which honestly I didn't notice any issues. But admittedly, I didn't play a whole lot of Bro Force, uh, and they improved level load times, uh, and they also fixed the network lag and the choppiness during gameplay. We which, we um, experienced a little bit of network lag, a mm-hmm. little bit of controller issues. There was a little bit of that. Yes, it was definitely. Thing, but the I, best part of that stream was like three quarters of the way of Jordan not being able to play. He accidentally taps his keyboard. He's like, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's, hey, 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 man. I'm, I'll, I'll cop to that. I actually really like Pro Force. Um, I'm glad that they're uh, still updating it and fixing bugs. Maybe, maybe we play a bit of it in the after show. Maybe if this time it could. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm kind of in between. I know Jordan really likes it. Jordan and Pedro's like, this is manly stuff. It scares me. And but <laughs> I, I never really got into it. It's I don't know why, but it, it's okay for what it is. It's pixel hipster yep. platforming but it, it has it's got its charm but the novelty kind of wears off real quick you're like once you are introduced to all the characters there's the whole like yeah all right i get it and <laughs> eh, whatever it's a party game all right anyways yeah. um the latest in a never-ending stream of updates for payday 2 is that this is update 180 that number seems a little low to me um but <laughs> This is, but they may not be enumerating I don't know. all you, of them. You got to think if it's payday, man. They got to update in like point, 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 point up increments because that fucker mm-hmm. gets an update every day, man. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. 180 seems a little low to me. 
Uh, any, anyways, they have a whole mess of fixes. Um, appar- apparently, uh, there's some negotiator issues. Um, they they fixed uh, the skill tree, uh, some stuff in the inventory. Um, there's a, there were there are a ton of uh, levels uh, that were having issues, and they've uh, fixed a bunch of stuff there. So it's good to see that they're actually like working on the gameplay experience. Is is it enough to reinstall Payday Two though? I don't think so. It's nine ninety nine. Even when it does handstands, how can you pass up such an amazing deal? <laughs> oh, that's right. They don't sell you the DLC anymore. Oh wait, yes they do. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 backpedal on that, Pedro. It's, really, it's, it's always super insightful talking to you. Hey, man. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they, I, they actually said that they were going to try and basically not uh, introduce any more DLC that you'd have to pay for, and any more of them uh, custom weapons and skins and whatnot. But they still have an entire backlog of like a hundred of them. That you still have to buy, Pedro. All, so all, Pedro, all the DLC totaled is four ninety nine. Four hundred ninety nine dollars. Nope. Four dollars ninety nine. Four ninety nine. All right. <laughs> uh, Five sixty nine Canadian. You, you, yeah, you, damn. you greedy bastard. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> l- l- listen, listen. Dude. Five dollars in Canada will like feed you for a year, man. <laughs> Five American dollars, maybe. <laughs> it's because you consist of maple leaves and hockey. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and sometimes I go and chew some eucalyptus that's growing in the back. <laughs> it's, it's shit happens, man. Shit happens. Um, Bum Simulator. It's coming out. It's going to be available October 5th, which is frighteningly close. What is it? you never heard of it. You've lost everything and ended up on the streets. That's right. You worked for MySpace. Wait. Um. <laughs> what will you do? Adapt and survive. Your name's Tom. No, I'm just making shit up. Take revenge on those responsible. You hear that, Facebook? Uh, become an urban legend. I don't know what it is, man. I'm looking at this. It's smoking. It's drinking. And it looks like it's just randomly assaulting. It's pretty much a bum simulator when you think about it. What I just described to you. The, the, this, this is like inner city Skyrim, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goat stimulator, but it's a first person shooter type thing and you're a bum. I, okay. Possibly. L- listen, I I I'm I'm intrigued enough because there's both t- pigeon taming and an underground society are rad people. Change I'm into this games. already. <laughs> I, I, I just want to know if you get a shotgun at any point, if you can like Rutger Hauer this. Hobo with a shotgun. Man, I don't this to me this just had a distinctive like postal vibe coming from it and you gotta admit if you go back and play like postal 2 you're like holy shit that that holds up in the sense of like they could not make maybe they're trying to you know we're, we're trying to bring funny back and by funny we mean horrible horrible things <laughs> and putting them in it video. could be the new postal yeah. mm-hmm. but i don't see the running yeah. with scissors people uh, as a developer again so, so, again so, to jordan's it, point it, it, to it, jordan's it, point uh yeah man murder simulator hobo murder simulator perfect put it on steam titties get it off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I will say though they're listing SteamOS as a uh, requirement on the mm-hmm. OS section so kudos for them for actually targeting the appropriate platform alright zoom zoom and the boom boom uh, Horizon Chase Turbo uh, Pedro they sent us some keys for this didn't they yes they did I sent them an email a uh, game they say it came out on May 15th. I sent them an email a bit later than that because uh, someone on Discord, uh, on our Discord, was talking about us like, uh, wait, I know those people. Oh, yes, they are the ones who developed uh, Ballistic Overkill. And we may have had, well, I had some issues with that game, but it was a competent game. And they put out a new one, which is a racing game, a single player racing game hey man it has local multiplayer and local <laughs> coop uh this is a thing now well, audio what listeners, about what about local sedans <laughs> audio listeners uh, <laughs> i will mute your ass i'm gonna get this out um you thinking about it what it's going for is i i see what they're going for it's like uh cruising usa the arcade game that i think everyone sees outrun. Under, yeah well this is more advanced yeah, yeah, yeah. outrun what it a 90s aesthetic is what they say they're going for, which really comes across as like a mobile racing game from the mid 2000s mm-hmm. is what it ended up being. Um, again, 
no, no online multiplayer in the video game, man. Uh, you know, much like '90s arcade racing games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but at least yeah, those, those too, would right? hook up to each other. Like there, there, there was. That's like the only excuse for having Jordan, like Jordan, multiplayer. Here's racing. the thing, incorrect because. I was yeah. looking to make the joke and I went researching old and I couldn't find any that actually, I was like, wait, cause I know there was some street fighter versions that linked up with each other. And there was that golfing game that did maybe, it. Maybe, maybe I'm also thinking of like initial or yeah, maybe or initial D or something like that. What, so, what you're thinking of is what I was thinking of. They could link arcade cabinets in the same area. Mm-hmm. So you could have like a group race yeah. with multiple machines, but yeah, don't worry. It's for the low, low price of 1999. So yeah, no, price. that that price is way, way off base. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Speaking of uh, ultra '90s retro aesthetics, okay. I present it all. It's a it's it's a game. It's available. I think it's you a, got the wrong decade there, Jordan. This is '80s, buddy. No, 80, listen, '80s, the '80s and the '90s were the same thing. If the, you have Pedro, only, Pedro, only '90s, <laughs> only, only '90s kids will remember the '80s. Pedro, you gotta cut hashtag, him some slack. He's a two thousands baby. <laughs> okay, L- listen, uh, listen. I'm a three thousands baby. Thank you very much. I came back in time to line your house with aluminum walls. Or with aluminum siding, man. <laughs> aluminum <what> walls. <laughs> Wait a minute, shit! I'm gonna go get those and melt Balloon them down. Aluminum walls. <laughs> Aluminum. B- Aluminum. <laughs> they're, 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 they're voluminous. Any, anyways, um, it's it's a bi-directional shoot 'em up. Um, Giggity. Sort of like a Galaga, except you can change your direction. There's a lot of flashing lights and colors and hipster pixels, and uh, when you when you download this game, you think, oh, maybe maybe this will be like uh, 200 megs. At most, no, it's it's a gig. It's a gig. I, I'm, I, <laughs> but yeah, here's the thing, it's, man. It's, it's a gig. You were running it on the wrong OS because it clearly states for Steam OS Linux requirements the OS is 64 bit only. Yeah, 64 bit. Did only. you have a copy of 64 bit only installed? <laughs> um, I, I've, I have a VM running of 64 bit oh, only. Okay, all right. Wait, so this is 64 bit only. Uh, does that count? No, no, because it's not 64 bit yeah. only trademark. It's it's, oh, Intel, okay. it's the right. Intel Itanic. Uh, I, I, itanium right, inside, right. you itanium, know those right, stickers right. exist somewhere. <laughs> uh, this was sent in by Foxy, one of our executive producers, because this one thing you can do is kick a note. And, uh, so, same, same with the uh, last story, too, actually. All right. Uh, what do we, we left a comment on that one. What do we have uh, now? Please look up Houston Consultants, which I did, and it seems like they made games like... Uh, before a lot of people were born and didn't really do mm-hmm. anything until they've done this. So, all right. It was a shmup. Yes. <laughs> Made by, uh, apparently it's all in 3D and uh, they just make the 3D look like pixels. Possibly. But then again, uh, Foxy's into like C64 gaming and stuff like that. So that's probably why. True, 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 <laughs> true but... T- I don't, I don't I don't know. To me, that just seems like a lot of work. We're going to make this game entirely in 3D. We're going to present it as a 2D game because fuck you. Mm. Anyways. That, that, let's, 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 yeah, let's put a bow on this section. Coming up next, guys and Feral, call it quits. And we taste some jam. Done. Boys and girls. Well, and um, that's the face of Jordan. He, he will get to speak in a moment. In fact, he will speak your ears. Fuck you, off. I do what I want. Half a I do what I want. See? Case in point. So, Jordan, since you're so keen, why don't you tell the lovely people why, how they can go about basically parting with their hard earned money? Yeah, yes, Jordan Senpai. And give it to us. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> yes, well, Jordan well, Senpai. Well, tell me, please. Well, Pedro Kohai, I will, but it's because I choose to do it and not because you told me to do it. Yeah, you can. You, I mean, if, if, if you listen, we've been at this for 300 episodes. We wholly appreciate your support. We could not even make it to 300 episodes if it weren't for the lovely, lovely people who give us money week after week after week. Go to Patreon. Go not even, not even Patreon.com. Go to LinuxGameCast.com. Click that support the show button. We got all sorts of things you can do to help us monetarily. You can buy us equipment. You can be like. Maddie, who's a fucking beast for buying us a freaking TV DAC. Um, or you can be like any of the other people who are using the affiliate links. Wait, wait, Humble wait, wait. Time out, time out. Did, did, did you say PV DAC or PV Dick? One of those is sexier yes. than the other. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
so his, his, his beastly dactic. Dick dac autodidact. Anyways, um Yes, the Dick Dacks. No, the <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to go down that David Carradine filled rabbit hole. You can also head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Um, help, help us out a little bit. Uh, you get, giving, us, uh, giving us a buck a week gets you access to a bunch of cool stuff, like access to the Discord channel where people shit post 24-7 and you just can't avoid it. Um, you can get access to the show notes. Foxy is always in our show notes, always giving us commentary and links, and you can be a cool bro like Foxy too, and you can be right side up too, because you don't have to be in Australia to be a Patreon at his level. And of course, uh, the lovely streams that we bring you basically five days a week now are brought to you by the by the folks at Patreon, and it's, it's just mind-blowing. The level yes, yes, this is a trap. Hey, man, speaking of those streams we do, all three of us do a stream. No. Because we hit that patron goal and we fucking deliver. I, listen, quantity, not quality, right? Uh, we do have a ratings yeah. war going on for this month, which I, I remembered to bring up this week solely not because I'm in the lead with uh, Friday Night Fubar. <laughs> ranking in at a whopping YouTube views of 57. Boom. Killing it. Pedro, Pedro's bringing up uh, second place with, uh, what did you do this week? Uh, <laughs> Force Showdown. Force Showdown. Somehow managed to get 48 <laughs> views. But I got second place. I didn't lose completely. So I'll take that as a fucking win right and, there. And, and Jordan, even with the help of Sandman himself, uh, lowly, nay, sickly, 35 views. <laughs> Listen, I, I place the blame entirely on Sandy because he decided, I'm going to take this on. I'm going to beat Ben in the ratings war. Send your hate mail to Sandy Martin. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm just saying free puppies get shit done. Uh, I'll be back. This is just just trivia night, Friday night. Come join us, baby. Even if you don't want to play directly, you can uh, audience participation. I, it was kind of funny. I think it was uh, Atomic. He was like, oh, the fuck did I lose that one? Because we had people play it at home and audience participation on the Jackbox shit and swinging the votes. But hey, thanks everyone for making this possible. Uh, if you can spare four quarters a week to help our dog shit, we, all that goes directly back in the show. We just want to keep doing oh, more yes. and more zany, wacky things and uh, crazy stuff to hopefully entertain you. Okay, uh, speaking of somebody who might need to start his own Patreon because he kind of pieced out of the cat. That's right. Um, Mark, he Mark. wrote on the Twitters, man. He's like, tomorrow will be my last day at Feral. As uh, sort of amazing ride, five zero five years, and uh, he was the Linux lead at Feral, man. Twenty plus AAA mm-hmm. Linux titles, and mm, he's gone. But I don't know. Do, do, do we take this with a grain of organ salt? Because you know, when you piece out of a company. You, Pretty, that that's like the boilerplate. Like everything's fine, copacetic and cool. I mean, honest, honestly, I think he just probably got a better offer because, like, here, here's here's the thing, like Jordan, you don't Jordan, see lifers do, do, do in the I software need to pull industry up a, anymore. I, I I need a a Dalek screaming, speculate, <laughs> speculate. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Well, I'd like to see some effort, then for once. <laughs> um. I, I, I mean that 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 is the sane sober take on it. Is someone just offered him more money, which is probably that. I I, I don't know, yeah. but I but if we want to spill up the booga booga drive and spin that wheel of booga booga, yeah, no, uh, feral ports Linux over. It's done. No more. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're well, gonna... as it is, even while he was still working at Valve, uh, feral ports were few and far between. I don't think this is gonna do anything to help that. Uh, particular trend. I don't know, man. Uh, I definitely got to look at it like this: is you know, if you're like, hey, uh, you know, we don't get a lot of ports from Feral, not for Linux or anything. It's just that they take a long time. We might get one mm-hmm. to two games per mm-hmm. year. We love Feral. Mm-hmm. We love the work they do. We do nothing but support that. But you know, when there's, I'll get to that in a second. Um, we reliably will get one or two AAA titles ish. A year, but unfortunately, a lot of times it's like sixty percent chance of them. They're going to be like niche as hell, man. We're talking the Total Wars, Formula Ones, that bullshit teen drama series. That hey, man, if it sells and that makes sense, that's good. So I say more power to Mark, whatever he has going on in his future. But it does worry me just a little bit that he left being the lead Linux guy with Rise of the Tomb mm-hmm. Raider in its current state. Isn't that right, Yano Tron? <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, but, it is. It's you know, uh... Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say, like, I it it could it could be that like he basically just uh, like zero efforted Rise of the Tomb Raider and then he's out there like I'm done, or maybe maybe he's on to something that will. I, 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 I don't know. I, I got no hot takes on this. This is I see this and I, I just see a guy who got a better job offer or he's tired or it, it's totally a thing where after working for a couple of years at a company, you're just like, I got to do something else now. This, yeah. is, this has been fun. I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. You can get burned out. So I guess all we can say uh, here at LGC is, oh, bye, Mark. Everybody uh, betray me. I'm fed up with this world. <laughs> You're tearing me apart. Cheese talks to something. What's it about? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, this, so uh, this is what happens when people don't color coach show notes, isn't it? Indeed. So, uh, uh, Cheeseness, you may know him from the um, the Double Fine ports. Uh, he did some of the, uh, the remastered edition ports to Linux. And he, along with a, a few other uh, Linux gaming personalities, not ourselves, uh, were, um, they had a bit of a um, game jam going. Uh, all the games are available on itch. And uh, I remember when we originally covered the story, they said that they uh, you would get exactly one bonus point if your game was open source. I don't think people really took that bonus point seriously because there are quite a few that are not. But uh, I had a look through all the games that uh, were a part of the uh, 2018 Game Jam. And, well, screenshots can sell a game, especially the screenshots that you use for the thumbnail for the big, you know, gallery that your game is being showed on. Because I looked at the screenshots of all the games, it's like, no, no. All right, so what's this post about, Pedro? If I was going to ask uh, in like a, a short summarized version that didn't drag on for another five minutes. So, Cheese it yes, was one of the person. judges for this particular game jam. And, well, now he has his hot takes on all the games. Uh, he played through all the games, and according to him, he made it a point to go to each and every single one and leave a constructive comment. Uh, to say where they could improve, if he really liked it, if for some reason he didn't like it. Uh, there were a couple of games that he um, he decided to showcase in this uh, article as, uh, it, from his words, they, they were the best, uh, in his opinion. But there were quite a few entries. There weren't as many. Uh, last year had 53 submissions, and this year had like... Oh, was it 35? Yeah. 34. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. One what, what, what interesting thing, too, was, um, like, uh, par- apparently there's a lot of newcomers, too. Um, only 10 mm-hmm. people who uh, submitted games for the skate year's uh, game jam were um, new. The rest were uh, all new people. So it's good to see people yeah. are actually trying to make some games on Linux. And, I mean, they're game jam games, so they're going to be simple. They're going to be to the point. And, you know, good job, guys. Some Indeed. It's good to see people decent. using Godot for a change. And uh, great yes. Go check it out. Uh, we, for the 300th time, get to imagine a world uh, with no wood in it. <laughs> yes. Well, this is Kenwood, not Kenbone, which is an entirely different issue. Um, I'm, I'm just going to leave that with a pregnant pause. Ha <laughs> ha! Topical. Anyways, they have a new version out. This is uh, Alpha 23, Kenwood. They uh, have they added a new uh, new civilization to the thing. Uh, they added a mod downloader. So and the the other neat thing is they added a thing where you can associate zero, the zero AD executable with mod files. So if you download the mod, double click on them, it'll just fire up zero AD and load the mod, which is pretty neat. Um, they added they added the Kushites, and I just have a bunch of weak <laughs> jokes to make. So I'll, I'll spare you those. You've, you, you, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad that this is not um, update 420 or whatever, right? Not dot four dot twenty. <laughs> oh, the crush uh, rates. Yeah, they, they got, they got uh, as as usual, they got graphical improvements. They got new visuals, uh, some new victory conditions, uh, diplomacy colors, some uh, better AI, lobby authentication. So now we can set the password passwordness on our zero AD games. Oh, really learn more about ancient Kush here, really? <laughs> oh, I, listen, 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 buddy. I know all about ancient Kush. Am I right? Oh. Ah, yeah. Yeah, we 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 jokes. That's uh, that's, well, that's what we get. Uh, 
since this is the 300th episode of uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly, they also have the Spartan building modules. Models, not modules. But So, yeah. Zero AD, it's still a thing, it's still around, and it still looks pretty damn good. I'm always impressed by this simply because I, I can genuinely imagine a world uh, where... <laughs> you remember we had to manually type in each other's IP address in order to connect like way back in the day this thing was like a prototype but it's even back then and it still is like when it comes to open source and just the quality that and the progress this has made and graphical fidelity you name it it's it it's good work it, it, look, it, look, it looks better than a lot of games on steam we keep bringing that up so like, it's, 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 yeah of course, then this, again, this, that bar gets dramatically lower as the years go by. It's a really low bar, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. James, James Cameron All cannot right. help with this situation. Uh, All right. Well, let's get hey. off the cushion onto the wine. Yes. Maybe some alcohol will help with this situation. It's wine. Wine 3.0.1 is now available. So you may be thinking to yourself, wait, isn't wine 3.7 out now? Nope. Yes. No, no, yes, no, 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 Pedro. I, I've not thought that to myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, if you are one of them heathens like myself, and Strider, and quite a few other people in chat room, uh, maybe you still have a decent library of wine games that you like to maybe play someday. And, well, uh, the stable version of wine, the stable branch, uh, I should say, is uh, version 3.0. And they have a little bit of an update to fix quite a few things. Uh, the one uh, update that actually caught my eye was the React OS one near the bottom. It's, uh, yeah, they just fixed uh, FTP.exe, which contained an endless loop. Uh, you you would enter an endless loop in React OS if you were uh, running FTP.exe in there. But that's been fixed. I'm sorry. If you're running so, React OS, you just deserve whatever the fuck it gives you, man. I mean. But, l- l- listen, so, some people are being actively tortured by the CIA and forced <laughs> to use React OS, and they can't help themselves. What, so well, they'll get well, shot. What's the use case? Did their Temple OS license expire? Or, uh, <laughs> yes, clearly. <laughs> listen, listen, if you need to run it on a 64-bit system, you got you to get with the React OS. I just like going through yeah. all these uh, wine updates. It only supports like, dual Jesus. Yeah, I, I got a, I got a quad Jesus though. <laughs> and no, let, let's let's not go down that puppet filled rabbit hole. Cause... Quad Jesus and dual channel. <laughs> and, and anyways, it, it, it's fun Double to, Jesus it's fun to go through these. Uh... SS Jesus. Wait, that could be a whole different thing. Yeah, SS SSJ, Super Saiyan Jesus, man. I don't I don't know. I just like what I like walking through all these these releases and like just seeing the random ass programs that they fix like sql server why would you be running sql server in wine apparently everquest crashes so people who are still addicted to evercrack uh who are running it on linux can finally um i i i have no idea what the hell they're even doing hey man it's wine it's an update it keeps getting better and some people just they, 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 they just can't cut it off i love wine as a project i don't currently play any game because i don't believe in supporting developers that don't support linux but it's going to be a great tool for just archive stuff because stuff is going to run with wine once it reaches it reaches a point that it just doesn't run with Windows anymore. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, I, and, and again, with Win, Microsoft is desperately trying to kill Win32. So mm-hmm. once that goes away, Wine's going to be the premier Win32 API apli- uh, implementation. And it'll be kind of interesting to see if uh, people just start targeting Wine instead of Windows or Linux or anything like that. Yeah. Anywho, hundred percent. Uh, anyways, so uh, delays, 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 delays. But we're not. We're pretty. We're pretty used to hearing about delays from Lab Zero. Uh, this is on uh, indiv- indivisiblegame.com. Links to all this stuff in our show notes, as the usual. Three hundred times we've said that, and three hundred times more we'll say that. Uh, and anyways, um, it's been delayed until the first half of 2019. Apparently, they had a couple t- uh, goals that were a little too ambitious. Uh, they were trying very, very hard to get it out the door this year. But uh, they decided to take a step back, focus on quality, as opposed to getting a busted release out. Um, there's still some stuff there. It's released uh, via the backer preview. So if you are uh, one of the Kickstarter backers on Div- Indivisible uh, or Indiegogo or Fig or whatever the hell funding they used, uh, you can still keep a track on uh, the active development. 
Uh, and like, uh, and I mentioned this in the show notes, there's probably no bearing for this on the Linux release because Civic already ported their engine and mm-hmm. Linux users, again, are fairly used to waiting for shit from Lab Zero. So yeah, this is true. Mm-hmm. I mean, it definitely rolls down. They delivered eventually. So we get on them. They, I, I knew they were eventually going to deliver Skullgirls because it was too good of a joke that we were able to use on this show for like two years. Um, Favorite good work, wire, Civic. Good work, Lab Zero, for finally getting that done. This does sound like if you're just boiling it down, Pedro, is listen, uh, they got some more money, so they're mm-hmm. going to finish the game like they want to finish the game instead of like putting out yep. something that is like a weird amalgam of like, uh, this feature's kind of in there and we, we won't, they, won't end they, up they something. They need an Xbox One version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've all seen. More than a uh, more than a few uh, crowdfunded, be it Indiegogo or Kickstarter projects, to go down the rabbit hole of uh, let's just make the core features of the game burn all our money, and as everything else just goes, uh, yeah, we could have done that, but we needed more money, or we are just outright not going to release for Linux on accounts of needing more money. But hey, these guys have more money, and they can actually do the game that they want to do, and the screenshots look really good. Just, uh, you know, uh, I hope the uh, 3D models with the 2D sprites are blended together slightly better than they currently show on the screenshots, but I'm sure they'll figure it out, I think. Seems legit. Wish them the best. We're going to talk about Microsoft because mm-hmm. we love Microsoft here at Linux Gamecast Weekly, <laughs> and it's our favorite product. They make... Uh, do they even make anything more? Anyway, they kind of did something that, uh, yeah. Controllers. Yeah. <laughs> they make controllers that work really well on Linux, and this is a controller, technically. Uh, it is a flat-looking controller. You say controller, what? Pedro. Everyone who's seen that from a distance without reading, go, wait, they released a scratch deck? Yes. Uh, yeah. It very much does <laughs> look it, like a, uh, it's, it's, a vinyl it's why table. It's those <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> And it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's a controller. It's got uh, a couple of uh, haptic feedback areolas, much like the uh, the Steam controller does. And on top of that, it's got a D-pad down the side, and it's got, I don't know how many uh, inputs they have at the back. They have Nin- a lot of them. 19. And basically, this is to help people with disabilities who can't really use uh, regular controllers with their hands to basically just plug in all of the adapters that they currently have for their controller since it's got jacks for just about every single one of them and each and ed- each individual one can be set as uh, an independent input or a button, a specific button or a specific axis uh, turn on one of the... Um, analog sticks it's a really good idea i am really curious to try it but microsoft being microsoft this is probably going to be prohibitively expensive i don't know uh well unfortunately a lot of special use devices like this uh are just stupid expensive because fuck you that's why you're gonna charge your insurance anyway which i hope they don't go Mm -hmm. around that well they they don't do that route with this because this does look like a neat piece of accessibility kit I'm down with that, but basically my only takeaway is, so you're saying that we don't have to wear tracksuits to use it? You don't. I think you can <laughs> use it. In, I, I think you can actually plug a tracksuit into it. And okay, it all right. It, it, you, <laughs> you, you're saying it will charge a tracksuit. Yes. Yes. The, the Google tracksuit. The track one. Man, I want a power armor <laughs> tracksuit, man. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, someone get on that. Linux theory, start working on it. No, the, the, all, and ultimately this is a good idea because, like, Gaming helps a lot of people, especially um, if people are like disabled via injury from like work or military. Um, gaming can provide a really very uh, positive uh, aspect of re- rehab. So enabling pe- more people to play games is ultimately a good thing. Hopefully, it'll it'll work on Linux. Hopefully, um, and yeah, ho- hopefully it won't be too prohibitively prohibitively <laughs> expensive. But that, that that that's the thing with accessibility hardware is that it's priced. The way it is because they can't sell it to as many people and also mm-hmm. because of insurance reasons but that that's uh and that's a debate for another time All right <laughs> custom blender formats <laughs> with ascii what i'm so confused wait no that's that's 
Yeah, the cold, the cold engine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, perm, or uh, rather, the permafrost engine. It's on GitHub. It's from Edward Permi, and it is. Um, if you if you want to make a real time strategy game, uh, it is an open source C plus plus OpenGL three based engine. Um, they have a. The, the one thing that's like a, they have a custom ASCII model format with a Blender export script. Buddy, that, that orc, buddy. orc's yeah. a little bit hypnotizing, man. He looks like he's funky fresh. <laughs> uh, oh, See, so funky I was fresh. actually looking more at the uh, Hell Knight with the Fu Manchu type of beard. The, 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 the TL Pedro doesn't know what a Fu Manchu is. Hmm. And, and anyways, um, it's built using SDL uh, two. It exposes a bunch of functionality via Python. Um, it's cross-platform, which is pretty nice. It supports both Linux and the Windows. I like that. Building permafrost engine on Linux, pretty straightforward. Windows might as well just say, go play in traffic, fuck it. Um. <laughs> yeah. Get, get, get clone, make, make install. Uh, yeah. It's thing. It's open source. Your ogre looks like it belongs on white people's gifts, but even though that doesn't necessarily work, and Pedro doesn't know what a Fu Manchu is. Um it's thing. It's project. Check it out. Support open source because we all need more engines. Uh, last but not least, uh, Pedro ducks. like posted a thing. You're gonna get ducks. LGC is gonna ducks you. Watch, watch that end yeah, up I'm going triggering to something. Duck. To finish right this now. sentence, man, I showed it show up on um, Google Plus, and there was a humble bundle, which a lot of people like yes. used our affiliate link this week. Thank you. That. Basically, like we broke even buying that first deck. Then Maddie's like, "Shit, motherfuckers, you have another one." Um, <laughs> but I, I saw you post it. I was like, "What were you fucking talking about this duck game all of a sudden? That doesn't work on Linux." Yeah, no, it does not have a, a Linux version officially. But uh, if you did buy the um, the hooked on multiplayer bundle, hooked on phonics version, Google, what? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you may have paid above the average, and you got yourself some duck game. And I, it's like duck game is on Linux. I remember that being on Linux. What the hell? So I did a Google search for it, and this is what came up. Uh, it's zero uh, x zero eighty uh, GitHub, and he has a literal drop in replacement uh, XNA to FNA that you just run the once it'll basically rename, convert all the files it needs to, and, well, it makes Duck Game work on Linux. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I followed the instructions. They're pretty simple. It's just uh, get a couple of uh, the dependencies and run the run the script, do all of the uh, file operations that it needs to do, and it should just run. Except on my end, it didn't immediately run. I still had to install GDI+, Plus, which... Probably I should have installed already, but it wasn't installed in Solus, so I downloaded that, and hey, it starts. It's uh, it works really well, and and bonus points. Online multiplayer works with the quote unquote unofficial port. Hey, hey. <laughs> ho ho! Yeah. Um, I like this. I dig this. You know, this is a perfect perfect example of uh, this guy. Walking out and pointing, pointing out, not pointing out, but leading with by example, man, saying there is genuinely no reason for this game or this game X not to have a Linux version. This is how easy it is. It's so easy. Even an I can do it and boom, go play with it. Well, yeah. and, and that's the thing. And the, here, here's the reason why you should be uh, subscribed or you should be supporting Flibit in whatever financial um, tool he's using because he's not on Patreon anymore. But. This is the culmination of his work, right? A lot of a lot of he's put a lot of effort into getting FNA to the point where you can literally use it as a drop in replacement for XNA games. And mm -hmm. this and this just goes to show that like you don't have to be flippant to do it now. You can be this freaking zero X zero ADE guy and uh, come up with a uh, functional uh, FNA port of your XNA game. And that's just this is super cool, man. It, it's, awesome. it's just yeah. like yeah, I mean you don't necessarily have to be a developer to be like okay this has been made so easy to use to the point and so it's just cool man this is a strange future it's yeah. like okay <laughs> literally just drop yeah, it yeah. in you might have to make a directory but there you go you know yeah, yeah, you drop yeah. it in and you run a script done <laughs> But yeah, but give, hang on, give him, give him a little bit money. He's doing good work. Yeah, you give him money. Give him all the love uh, yeah. and support any way you can. Do you? Who, who gets to be the dick that like sends an email to the developer and go? Like, I ported your game for you. 
<laughs> Could you put uh, it on Strider, stage? Probably. Yeah, it'll be in Lutris tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned to that. Uh, coming up next, uh, we're going to provide some much needed QA for a game. It's totally not Hexen. It's totally not. Didn't think up of a pithy opening for our 300th. Well, this isn't our 300th chairquisition. This is the chairquisition for episode 300. But whatever, we're 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 in chairs at Apocryph today. It's from Big Zer Games, developed on Unity. You can pick it up for around 20 of your local particular currency. Oh wait, is what this is regionally Apocryph? priced or just regular? Uh, it it, it is. It is regionally priced. You can pick it up for 15 mm-hmm. pounds uh, or three thousand dollars Canadian if you're so inclined. <laughs> um, <laughs> What, what is it? Apocryph is an FPS set in the brutal dark fantasy world. It takes its roots in old school fantasy shooters, so prepare for intense sword and sorcery FPS action amidst forgotten castles, evil shrines, and decrepit dungeons. Uh, Got to thank the devs uh, Big Zer Keys for sending us Big Zer Games for sending us some keys, not Big Zer Devs for sending us Big some Zer Devs. Whatever. Get her, get her Listen, devs. Pe- Pedro. Pedro is channeling his drunk into me now. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Stop it, Pedro. Stop it. This is your acquisition. This is where we uh, take a game like Apocryph. Play it. Uh, talk about it. Uh, give our opinions in a, and maybe do a little bit of quality assurance that should have been done before they push this out to prod. And lo and behold, it may require some. We rate everything on a scale of one to four chairs. One chair means it's crap. Two chairs means it's math. Three chairs means it's pretty good. Four chairs means it's awesome. And we apply those to our categories. Oh, do mix with working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So uh, let's kick off mix with the working then. Right. Yeah. Let's just round robin this like old, old school for old time's sake before we get into the wicked new stuff. Uh, Let's just talk about whether or not it worked, man. As you can see, we are color coded. I'm up here with a stupid monkey Humbuntu logo. Jordan's rocking the fedora, my lady. And all uh, the man on the islands, the man with the boat. That's not Arch. Nope. That's (laughs) Solus. Yes. Uh, how did it work on this end? You know what? I didn't have too big of an issue with it. Grading it simply in performance, we're going to be testing everything at 1080p. Uh, on low, about 70, 74, high, 50, 60. That's with my 980, too. Uh, it launched full screen's good, big picture's good, no fucking windowed mode, because fuck me, that's why. And like a big thing that kind of nailed it for me, I found out that quick saves don't work, but I'll talk about that when we get to the fun. How about you, Jeb Baby? Yeah, so on uh, Fedora uh, with the 1080 Ti, we're not getting too much of a performance delta between that and the 980. (laughs) (laughs) Even with that uh, high-powered Intel CPU. Um, On uh, high, it's averaging about 56 frames a second. Sometimes it'll go above 60. Even if you turn VSync off, it's not really helping that much with the frame rate. Um, although it does turn into a bit of a terror fest. Uh, like Ven said, there's no real windowed options. You got to do it through the Unity Prefs file. And yeah, that quick save just straight up does not work, which is pretty annoying. Um, but yeah, beyond that, everything ran acceptably well, all things considered. What about you, Pedro? Yeah, over here, uh, high or very high made no freaking difference when it came to the FURPS because I was getting anywhere from four. Uh, 47 to 78 FURPS, depending on where I was looking in each of the maps. So we, we uh, got to yeah. establish that between a 980 and a 1080 and a 1080 Ti, basically the same shit. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Pretty much the exact same uh, average there. So yeah, over here, uh, windowed mode does not work. You can set it to windowed mode in the Unity Prefs file, and after some massaging, it's almost workable. But uh, one thing I noticed, uh, the video you're looking at right now, uh, that's uh, I had to start the game from the beginning because I was already at level four and the game just, it would keep crashing whenever I tried to record it. It, it did. I, I, I got a message from Pedro's page. Was like, is this thing crashing a lot on your end? I was like, nope. Yeah, but it was only while recording because I played it a bit more after I was done recording and without the without obs open at the same time it didn't crash so something odd is going on there and quick saves that's an interesting one it didn't work at all for you guys but it worked for me except it jacked up the brightness all the way up like it just i don't know if i'd call uh, that working sweetheart (laughs) yeah it's 
almost working, but... <laughs> that, 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 it, that's uh... like getting a gold star saying an attempt was made. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's, For sure. it, it saved and you could quick load just fine. It's just that the brightness was jacked all the way up. Like they had a gamma bar, which they have a brightness bar, but it doesn't really seem to affect anything. So yeah, no, it it it, it has issues. All right, let's move on to shiny and sounds, Jerry Baby. Yeah, um it's I mean the the first thing that stuck out to me because the the visuals are not particularly that impressive but it's it not fugly like, uh, is it i mean it's not it, it's not fugly it just looks like hexen right uh, they, yeah. it's a hexen clone quakes inspired by hexen quakesen they they quakes they, and oats. they 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 basically have the aesthetic down and you're not going to get any points for it cuz it it's has something what amish before. crave <laughs> Barnes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Churn lots uh, of butter? The, the, yeah, the, 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 back, the background music is just like kind of this distorted guitar manoodling. Um, when, when it comes to the games with heavy metal soundtrack, I think Seam actually had a better soundtrack than this. Uh, this is just kind of meh. It's a bit chuggy. I threw yeah. on a podcast in the background just because I was kind of sick of listening to it after a while. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, it's it's kind of middle of the road for me. It, it's not doing anything super impressive. That lava texture looks like they ripped it straight out of Hexen. Let's, let's be real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> did, did it blow yeah. out your eyes? Mm, not exactly. Although the amount of uh, particle effects on screen was uh, detrimental to my ability to play this game in any competent fashion at some points. Uh the I tried the uh, pixel mode because yes, they have a pixel mode in the options. Uh, as someone who played Quake on the Saturn, mm-hmm. this particular pixel mode made me feel queasy. That's how bad it was. So yeah, no, the background music is all right. It, it's a bit that too made you feel queasy, pool. and not not the shame of having played it on the Saturn. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't Quake that made me feel queasy. It was this game in pixel mode. I don't know why. Maybe it's the lack of uh, the lack of proper depth perception, something like that. Depth but uh, it did not sit well. Yeah, it did not sit well with my brain, and it made me feel a little bit motion sick. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, so the, what, what, I, what I'm hearing is you want to play this in VR then? Mm-hmm. No, 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 you don't at all. Yeah, you do. And the whole quick yeah, saving, yeah. jacking up the gamma makes the game even look even more like ass. So you you, you mean yeah, astounding? Yeah, you uh, did. More like ass no. amazing. Uh, <laughs> I agree with you, Pedro. Man, this thing it dude, the biggest thing is is it doesn't matter when we say this thing gets to sixty to seventy. Sometimes, occasionally, mm-hmm. this thing performs horribly no matter what type of graphics card. Even a 1080 Ti can barely tap it on 60 on occasion. But what you were saying about the pixel mode, yeah, I mean, it's got like beautiful, fantastic. None of that, I mean, if you slam it all the way down to pixel mode, it it, it is maybe. W- w- would you agree with me? Like a hair, a hair above fucking Quake's ASCII render. A hair, a very thin, <laughs> thin hair. hair, basically one of my hairs. <laughs> Jordan, something I want to get your thoughts on, man. I found myself like not hating because I first I played it probably the first 30, 35 minutes. I, I didn't have my cans on and I put my cans on. And I was like, wait a minute. Do I not hate this background music? <laughs> it's it, like I said, it's just kind of meh. As, as as far as like guitar noodling in like heavy metal guitar noodling goes, it's kind of middle of the road. Um, but I mean, it it works for what the game's trying to do, and it's not like obnoxious dubstep or anything like that. Mm. So can't really fault mm-hmm. it for it. They did an okay job. So uh, do do and, you think the performance was uh, limited by a uh, Ryzen seven or your uh, i seven quad core eight thread part? I think the M.2 drive did a number on it, and I just couldn't. <laughs> oh, that, that's probably what it was. It was probably our NVMe hard drives that uh, was. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. We're all running yeah. them too, so it's got to be that, right? <laughs> that, that, that's probably what tripped it up, guys. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I'm going to say this, man. I thought level design was decent. I mean, it really gave me a Quake vibe. What you're looking at right now is like, uh, Jordan. You made a good point in the pre-pre super show. Go back and listen to that, patrons is like going around corners that was very quick ash you're like ah, i know what's around this corner yeah i mean uh, i mean um 
Uh, I, I would, I would maybe lump, do we want to just switch it over to the control section just cause we might as well. Yeah, go. Kind of done with the. Uh, uh, yeah, here right. we go. Here's mine. They work. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much. Um, yeah, but yeah, no. Uh, what, 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 uh, what you're getting at is right, though. Like the, the level design is actually competently done. Uh, it's probably one of the stronger points of this game. Uh, bas- basically, but it gets to the point though where, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that later. Control wise, yeah, it's Waz, man. If you make a shooter and you're not using Waz as your control scheme. You've made a very questionable decision, and unless you can back that up with something really innovative, man, you, you, you just need to dude. shut the front door because uh, <laughs> Call of Duty Bros too spooky for your. You see, using a controller requires more skill. <laughs> Hell, even, even, even no, using a controller, it's, 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 it's mapped to that was paradigm, though. Like you just replace the the joystick directions with arrow keys and one mouse. Um, but but uh, I mean, the okay. Here, I got a question for you guys. Did you everyone forget that there was a fucking bullet time mode in this game? Because I kept forgetting that I that was. I didn't a even thing. know it had one. Uh, no. Yeah. Also, did you know you could kick? Yes, no. uh, you can. I, I, I did know that. Yeah, there's there's like a bullet time mode. There was there was a Q. couple points where I was just getting swarmed and I was getting my ass kicked, and I hit Q. And yeah, it's like oh, this hey, motherfucker from Star Trek and... shows up, and you're like, what the hell? <laughs> why, why are you in my? Yeah, he starts snapping for? his fingers at you. Yeah. Yeah. Mariachi yeah. band yeah. shows up. Yeah. You're yeah. like, all right. No, and 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 then he starts trying to kill you because like uh, your his daughter died in a plane crash or something. I don't know what's going on with that guy. Works out. Um, <laughs> uh, any, <laughs> and, 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 anyways, yeah. The the the, the other thing that kind of bugs wigs me out about the controls. Really inconsistent invis- invisible walls. Mm-hmm. This section specifically. Yes. Um. Yeah. Where like you try to shoot over the fence, they can hit you through the fence. You cannot hit them through the fence. Yes. Also, <laughs> on this level with a bunch of stairs, sometimes stairs a little bit sticky. Just a little bit. It's usually the very last step, mm-hmm. especially on like the stone textured uh, stairs. It, your character has this really nasty tendency to get stuck on that particular bit of terrain. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not just your character, because uh, you actually brought out a very good point in the show notes, uh, Ven. The enemies, they just fly off when they hit the stairs. (laughs) Yep. Oh, they do, man. They they also do this this weird jumping thing, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, (laughs) Trust me, I'm going to talk about that in a hot second. Uh, But, listen, in general controls, Jordan, I think you're right. Was, it moves, it does shit. And I don't think anybody in their sideways mind would ever attempt to try this with a controller. So <laughs> yeah. probably not. Now, uh, maybe maybe a, steam, maybe a steam controller. What we need to ask ourselves is: Did we have fun? <laughs> did we though? Did we? <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Peace out. See. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the uh, answer on this one is a resounding eh, no, not particularly. No. I know I didn't. I, I think I, I was. I was really what you know. We had strafe a while back. It's like okay, this is really good. You know, quake roguelike type of thing, and I really wanted this to be maybe even if it wasn't a roguelike. If it was as competent as Strafe, but for Hexen, I wanted this to be that so much, and it failed miserably. <laughs> uh. Listen, I mean, there's some things I like about this game because it's just things you have to discover. Pedro has played this game. He he didn't know he could kick. That's, I just thought to ask him. I was like, <laughs> why, why aren't you kicking things? <laughs> and kicking is very handy because immediately into the game... You go from, you know, punching everything, which is a valid solution to most of life's problems, um, to getting pew pew weapons, which you have to find different uh, recharge items, right, Jordan? Yeah, there, there, there are three different ammo types, and each weapon will use one of the three. Yeah, yeah that's the thing, but uh, it, it works. I, I like some, I, I like that it doesn't tell you, we were talking earlier, Jordan, about how it doesn't. You you liked how the levels ended, right? Or began. It was like, hey, there's the uh, exit, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, or uh, where they, they do this thing where it's like, this is where you need to go, but we're not going to let you go through here. You got to actually explore. Um, ta- talking about level design, uh, I was talking about a game designer by the name of Janelle JK. She did a lot of the um, she did a lot of the uh, level design for Quake 2. Mm-hmm. She's also written quite a few uh, Dungeons & Dragons modules back in her time. Um, but 
her, uh, the maps that she designed have like a really interesting uh, tendency to sort of loop back in on itself. And you, you can find like multiple entrances to a given area. And this game sort of attempts to do that, but it's a little too rudimentary. Where eventually you'll loop back. But especially in games like these where you kind of want to have room to maneuver and circle strafe. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, fi- I find that there are a lot of like really cramped corridors here. And that's not really, it, it, it just makes it a slog. You're just mashing on your freaking left click button until stuff happens. It kind of does. I noticed that Pedro started uh, out in, go, go ahead. Oh no, I was, I was just going to say like, um, but the, the other thing level design does too with the, uh, with the corners is you, it forces you to do what we in the business call adopt a dungeon pace where you just kind of sneak forward a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, just to, just to draw the aggro of whatever is behind that blind corner. That, Cause you know, they're there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> know they're there. Cause they were behind every other fucking blind corner. Sometimes it's the other corner, but they're always behind that one corner and you just got to draw them out and shoot them. Otherwise you just get killed to death. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I noticed was when Pedro started the game, I was like, Oh, Pedro, you got it in hard mode. That's nightmare fuel. It's a pain in the ass. I had to dial that back because I wasn't having a fun time. Not because of the difficulty of it. You know, I spent like 30 minutes. It's like, Holy fuck. All this thing's hard to the point of, uh, well, I'll tell you what it, it did. It was the middle bit of difficulty that I picked. It wasn't the hardest. It was the, the middle. What it caused me to realize, though, was, it, you know, you want to win, so you, uh, like, adopt your strategy. Just like, wait a minute. AI, this game does not have AI, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it has enemies that as soon as you trigger, sometimes just by swinging your weapon or getting in proximity... Mm-hmm. Then they just all start trying to rush on you at one time. That's what I was talking no, about earlier. They're, they're, in the, show. they're, the, they're yeah. the suicide bomber guys from uh, Serious Sam. All of them. Every yeah. single enemy <laughs> does the exact same thing. So my strategy was not so much trying to take out the enemies like old school, where, you know, strafing, circle strafing, running backwards. It was, no, these motherfuckers are mindless and you can get them hung up in the actual scenery and shit in the level. Mm. Then you get them hung on that. Then you just snipe the fuckers off so i i dialed it back so i could get a little more up close and personal but jordan mm. with the jumping thing that that's something you got to watch out for in this game because the, the enemies if you're above them they don't handle that shit well not at all man they no the, uh the, the, this again again this is this is a this spot that pedro's in is another uh is another specific thing where you, you trigger that and they get they get stuck, and if you shoot at them, they fucking jump at you. They jump, mm-hmm. but they fucking... if you're not careful, they they will fly up into the air. I mean, like, poof, like wait, where did yeah. I go? Causing you to look up, and you're rewarded by doing that with a decided yeah. uh, excess of monster taint. Um, well, yeah, yeah you, so you, you straight up, you straight up get you straight up get teabagged, mm-hmm. straight up. Yeah, and and again, there, there's all sorts of little issues here that sort of stop this game from being like a two chair. Like the the invisible walls, the the weird functionality. I, I I don't I don't know. There's a good game in here somewhere. There is. It just needed a little more time in the there. There is a good game in here somewhere. It was called a uh, Hexen. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Hexen two. Oh, Hexen two was really good. 1997. <laughs> but here, here, here's the thing. The, the, this game, um, it's been the sort of game has been done well before, and it was called Ziggurat. Ziggurat was great. Oh yes, Ziggurat um, was all right. Uh, this and it perform it performed better than this, hundred percent. Yeah, they mm-hmm. they got to fix this. This game has been just plagued with shit because first of all, it's twenty bucks. All right, I know that's turned most <laughs> everyone off. Uh, it was released with three levels as a finished game, even though throughout its entire early access, they're like, no, the finished game will have like what ten levels or something like. It still doesn't mm-hmm. have all the levels. Um, is yeah i i, I want to like it it's got a, a lot potentially going for it and i i think you know we, hey repeat something you've said on the show a bunch of times which i don't <laughs> like saying is you know if what you're looking at right now think old school uh accent with a fancy fancy lackety hairdo if this was an early access title if it was still an early access and they would just released another update to it I'd be borderline impressed, man. A little bit hopeful for this, but no, man. Mm-hmm. This is not a finished product, but not by a far damn sight. No, no, it uh, isn't. You, and, you, you, uh, you, you want to talk about uh, safe scumming a little bit? Because you, you, Ben, you and I both ran into that. Okay, yeah, we should point that out. This is why I quit playing the game. 
I was kind of getting into the game once I discovered the soundtrack didn't completely suck. Um, but Jordan's right. I mean, it's the same shit over and over, but it's better than nothing or like beat bloops and shit like that. Uh, F5, autosave. That's something, because it's like, man, I'm getting killed a lot when I was playing it in fuck you mode. So I learned what autosave was, and I like chugged all the way through like level five or whatever, which actually took a little bit of strategy, a little bit of skill. And I was like, all right, peace out. I got to go do some stuff. I came back, you know, because I waited for it to load the next level. And this is what really pissed me off. None, none of my quick saves, or it also didn't register that I had made it to the next level. It didn't start me off on the next levels. I said, fuck this game. <laughs> oh, man, I, I ran into a weird bug where, like, I, I tr- did a level transition and mm-hmm. I still had zero hit points. And it was just like, are you, are you going to kill me? Mm. No, I, I, had to, I had to restore from an earlier save scum I did just to just come back, just to complete level with an appropriate amount of hit points so that I could progress through the rest of the game. Yeah, there, 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 there's definitely some design problems here, and I really think that more time could have been spent fixing them. And may, may, maybe maybe as the game matures, they'll uh, identify them and patch them out. That's the beauty of digital distribution these days yeah. is you can fix, you can yeah. to some degree, you can fix your mistakes. This is true. Uh so uh, if if we're gonna if we're gonna put a bow on it, what do you think we're gonna give this two cheers? Uh, it's gonna get a pass on a technicality that it works, but that's mm. not good. No, it's not. No, it isn't. Uh, for more inform for more information, you can check the news post that'll have the full breakdown. It'll have all the details, our thoughts, things we may, may have missed, and per category chair rankings. Um, let us know if you like the new format or not. Uh, send us some hate mail, which we'll read out next. Also, uh, immediately when you, Jared, you gotta say that like this is like, the new format. We're throwing shit at walls right now, so keep that in mind. <laughs> oh yeah, no, th- this is this is how it's gonna be forever and ever and ever. I have to create it. I I also like a little scene. behind the scenes before we went live. I know I'm sorry. This is still in the chair position. I was like, Jordan, are you gonna stick with that gangster lean? Jordan, absolutely. He's been leaning the entire time. I just want to point that out. <laughs> LGC cares. We'll see you in the eight mil time frame. It's the end of the show for this week. Don't worry. We'll be back. You can't get rid of us. We're like a bad rash, but hey. Bullshit. If- Bullshit. Jordan said he was going to release <laughs> me from my curse after 300 episodes and I could go back to my ho- I mean, uh, yes. No, I lied. He lied. He lied. Dick. <laughs> Just because he's Canadian doesn't mean he's nice, you know? I, yeah, I was, have... was going to go in another more very Bible direction, but, you know, it's probably... <laughs> Are you trying to yeah, say he nailed it? <laughs> so... <laughs> So, if you'd like to uh, perhaps send some hate mail on accounts of those bad puns that you just heard, go on over to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. Fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Make sure LGC Weekly is the thing that you've selected on the little drop downy thing. And Bob's your uncle. Uh, I haven't said that one in a while. So... Let's see. If you if you're a game developer and you'd like us to talk about your game, make sure to include three keys. I know I'm stuttering a little bit. I've been drinking. It's already daytime. It's it's time to stick the landing, but the plane's flying kind of like this coming in. <laughs> but yeah, just a, a send us a prototype or three keys, three Steam keys, three so just keys, three prototypes, dog keys, whatever. And a key. Yeah, three prototypes, three different ones, so we all have different experiences. <laughs> At least we'll all be able send, to send, play the send game. us a key to your house. That, that's what you need to do. Make, <laughs> make copy of your house key. Send them to us. <laughs> Don't uh, do that. <laughs> all right. Coming up first is from Jeff. You know Jeff, right? Hefe. Yeah, Hefe. Yeah, Jeff, man. He was uh, Craig Ferguson's uh, uh, co-host on... Robot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's actually related to Frank. It, it's damnedest thing. Um, talks about control. We were talking about that last week in like, this perfect world where you can just plug in a fucking Steam controller in 2018 and not have to deal with bullshit. He says, what is up with the controller support uh, Q Seinfeld music in 2018? It's like throwback, trying to get shit working on Windows 98. I don't know. Didn't have that experience. Uh, combo, I've had my old uh, Panther XL, giggity. In Steam, the best you can do is turn off controller support and use anti-micro to map the controller fine until I play Tomb Raider. Oh, no, what? No one has ever had a problem with Tomb Raider. Quit hating on Feral. Uh, 
Then any movement, the joystick turns the mouse trackball inputs off, so you can play with keyboard and mouse or joystick, but cannot play with the joystick and mouse. On an older game, such as Jedi Academy, played through Open JK, none of this is an issue. Jedi Knight. Yeah. Uh, LOL, JK. Uh, you can use <laughs> joystick, mouse, and easily bind the buttons to whatever. When, why, did things go back downhill? Question mark. Gentlemen, we were talking about we were talking about this in the in the pre-show about like um, when mm-hmm. we were discussing the re- revisions to the chair position mm-hmm. that like controls shouldn't really be a section because it's 2018 SEL is a thing, but it is. Um, it we, is. We, we have a we have a lot we have a lot of good tools now for handling input mapping for um, you got Steam you got Steam input you got SDL two uh, you got Xbox DRV yeah that that one mm-hmm. uh, you got you got a couple of them and all of this and it's all still a pain in the butt to get controllers working unless you're Ethan Lee, in which case then everything works. Hmm. <laughs> the magic of SDL. But yeah, it's uh, if every single game that we, th- that we throw <sighs> chairs at runs SDL, yeah, controls wouldn't be an issue. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the fact of the matter is a lot of them are running Unity, and Unity does not do SDL all that well. So, yeah, controls, as much as we'd like, you know, current year argument shouldn't be an issue, but it still is. It's an issue. Hey, man. Ritz thing. Maybe things get better. Uh, somebody we haven't heard from in a long, long time. Gustavo, Gustavo. man. He said... He says, you totally need to celebrate the 300th episode by opening a new show, the Linux Winecast, and play the newest additions to the YNHQ website. You can also <laughs> add a virtual box segment where you test vintage, vintage games on ReactOS. Make it a Patreon goal. Love, Gustavo. Listen, man. <laughs> Gentlemen. Web, website? <laughs> I, need to, I need to go and check my website and all of a sudden... <laughs> Wine HQ, the website, <laughs> website chronicles. Listen, listen, listen. If your website's inflamed, you need to go see a doctor right away. <laughs> More like double delicious, Jesus. Um, yeah, uh, a wine show. I, we, I've tossed this around. It would be called Wine O's, but you know, if um, here's the thing, I don't know anybody. I listen. A- I, I don't know anybody involved in the fucking wine project. I don't know anybody who makes use of wine on a regular basis or would have any type of knowledge of it. I mean, if we could meet those criteria, maybe. But it's, I don't know. See, we're we're know, on the lookout. That, 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 that's that's the thing, though. You got to go double wine. You have to be just completely sloshed on red wine while you're doing the podcast. Red, yeah, red wine. So let's say get Strider there because he's working me. with Lutris and wine and whatnot, and get a wine developer with Strider and just watch everything catch fire. We should get a boxing ring first, maybe some, <laughs> or maybe like a, a kiddie pool full of oil uh, or something. How about we just get I boxed wine and call it even, right? Two, <laughs> yeah. two, two birds, one chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, close enough, right? <laughs> I, I, two, two, I, birds, one bo- two birds, one box. I, I said boxing ring, not boxing white. And Steve-O shows up and just like, I don't know where and punches it one time and runs off. It's like, ah. <laughs> wine cooler. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys like, like and a- girls, for the 300th time, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 930 Eastern time. Maybe one day we'll do one of those elusive moon early episodes. I don't know, that would require us getting our shit together, and we're not good at that, if you haven't noticed. But thank you for letting us do this, uh, and we hope to keep it up at least, like, one more episode. Anyway, I'm Vin Stone. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, if you're going to send me a DM on Twitter, like, if I follow you, I get it. If you, if I don't follow you, it ends up in, like, this moon, moon folder with a bunch of ass spam, so don't take it personally if I don't get back to you on that. Just at reply me like regular people, or... Uh, Find me on Google Plus. I'm there. I'm Jordan Spung, and I'm going to stay on at least until episode 333, because then I can be like, well, we were going to go for 666, but then I got lazy. <laughs> you can find me at The Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Spung on Google Plus. Halfway is more than no way, right? And uh, 
Maybe it's the sunlight behind me talking, but... Uh... No, no, but it's the copious <laughs> amount of ethanol that you've consumed. That's what's talking right now. That, that's making you hallucinate that the sun is talking. <laughs> yeah. Listen, oh, yeah, you just the stare that sun directly there. in the eyes and tell it to go uh, away. But you will actually find me on Twitter at an accounted for or on Google Plus at Plus Mateos, if you're so inclined. Hey. It's been Sparta, bitches. Let's roll some credits. <laughs> Sparta is, is the 300th. Oh, yes. And now, now stay tuned for a three-hour supercut of every time Gerard Butler sings in Phantom of the Opera. This, this is going to happen. <laughs> We're going to make this a thing. <laughs> we think of our executive producers, uh, other producers, regular producers, everybody. I want to throw another shout-out to... Uh, Maddie, Maddie's blowing us up. Maddie likes buying us USB audio devices, which we're going to put to use. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maddie has a buy three in front of his name when it comes to the fuck wall now. That's that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> you want to talk fiscally irresponsible? Maddie. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he's Canadian, too, so like those are worth like $1,000 a pop. I was about to say, man. And also Matt K, latest Patreon, who's also not in the credits, but now you are technically, so ha! We will. Yeah. Don't don't kink you shame Maddie. Fetishes, Maddie. <laughs> don't don't you kink have shame weird him. Fetishes. Kink shame? Mm, <laughs> hot. Could that be a fetish? Kink shaming? I I, I think that's just humiliation as a fetish. I don't fucking know. Is there like kink uh, kink shaming dom dom and uh, fuck brain? Uh, pff, tap out. I'm out. Dom <laughs> dom <laughs> bomb up bitches. Hashtag BDSM. Five dudes.